Hi everyone. In this video, you're going to learn about Chapter 2, Scientific Method. These are the topics that you're going to learn. Experimental Analysis, Variables, Experimental and Control Group, and Introduction to Data Analysis Methods, Quantitative and Qualitative. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to design a study to test a given hypothesis using the procedure and terminology of the scientific method and identify and differentiate between quantitative and qualitative data and its analysis methods. Okay, let's we go through the previous lesson. In previous lesson, you learn about the definition of science. So science means a way of thinking and also the method of investigating the natural world in a scientific manner or process. So generally, science means systematic process in which organize and quantify the knowledge. So there are two types of systematic processes, such as the discovery-based science, which use the inductive reasoning logic. However, the hypothesis-based science use the deductive reasoning logic. Then you also learn about the scientific method. Scientific method means it's a series of steps that used to investigate. So there are seven steps such as observation, question, formulate hypothesis, design and conducting the experiment, collect and analyze the results, conclusion and communicating the results. So before you design the conducting the experiment, you should know the basic and important characteristics of experimental research. So there are two important characteristics such as comparison of groups and variables. So there are two types of groups such as control group and experimental group. Control group is the group that does not receive the treatment. However, experimental group is known as treatment group and also this is the group that received the treatment. So control group is actually used for comparison to the other group. So these two groups are differ by only one variable. So there are three types of variables such as independent, dependent and control variable. So based on the group and also the variable, a prediction test will be conducted. So a prediction test must be tested through the actual experiment and also the control experiment. The actual experiment through the experimental group and the control experiment through the control groups. Control groups, there are two types, positive control group and negative control group. Positive control groups are the control groups in which set to cause the positive result. However, the negative control groups are the groups that set to cause the negative outcomes. Next, we look at the example of the prediction test. Okay. So this is the prediction test to identify the plant growth. So the plant growth is actually the dependent variable. Okay. Then the independent variable is water. And then the control variables are sunlight, type of soil, type of plant, and size of pot. So there are two plants, plant A and plant B. Plant A act as a experimental group, plant B act as a control group. So the dependent variable is plant growth and then the independent variable is water. So it means the experimental group is actually receive the water, however the control group does not receive the water. So we're going to identify the impacts of the water toward the plant growth. So the plant growth observed since week one until week three. So during week three, we can see clearly that the plant A grow higher than plant B. Okay. Now let's we guess what will happen during week four. Of course, the plant A grow more higher than the plant B. So here you can see clearly that the control group is used to compare with the experimental group. And the difference between these two groups are the independent variable. 
Okay, the variables are the factors that can cause an observable change during experiment. As I mentioned earlier, there are three types of the variables, such as independent variables, dependent variables, controlled variables. So you keep in mind that the controlled variables are the factors or the condition that kept constant throughout the experiment. Independent variable means the thing or the factor that being manipulated or changed between the control and experimental group. Dependent variable means the thing or the factor that changes as a result of the experiment. So here, the independent variable is the one influence the dependent variable. For example, the dependent variable is plant growth. The independent variable is water. So based on the independent variable, the dependent variable change. Okay, let's we look at the another example of the experiment. So based on this experiment, the hypothesis is the grasses grow in the presence of sunlight. So based on the hypothesis, make the prediction. If in the absence of light, then the grasses will not grow over that time. So based on this experiment, there are three variables such as independent variable, dependent variables and control variable. So the independent variable for this experiment is light or absence of the light. So the dependent variable is growth of the grass. Then the constant variable or control variables are temperature and volume of the water. So the samples of the specimen is grass seed from the similar species and same weight. Okay, this is the control group and this is the experimental group. Control group in which the seeds exposed to the sunlight so that the plant grow well. When we look at the experimental groups, both also kept in the incubator without the sunlight. So the first experimental group shows that the plant growth affected, thus the hypothesis is accepted. However, the second experimental group shows that the plant grow well. So the hypothesis is not accepted. Okay, so let's say if the hypothesis is accepted. So, should retest and then should report the result in the form of graph, tables and photographs. If let's say the hypothesis is not accepted, so you should revise the hypothesis and you should run the experiment again. Okay, next you're going to learn about introduction to data analysis methods, quantitative and qualitative. Okay, data means is the recorded information or observation that gathered during the experiment. So actually the data can be classified into two categories such as quantitative and qualitative data based on the types of the research method. So the experimental analysis could be done after the data collected. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, there are two types of data quantitative data and qualitative data. Quantitative data is numerical and structured. It can be countable, expressed as numbers and often organized into tables and graphs. Quantitative data can be gathered through the experiment, test, survey and etc. So the quantitative data can be analyzed using the statistics such as the ANOVA, t-test, correlation to test whether their results are significant or not. For example, let's say you're going to measure the volume of the water using the measuring cylinder. So the volume of the water is measurable and countable. Therefore, it is the quantitative data. Okay, next is qualitative data. Qualitative data is non-numerical or descriptive. So keep in mind that quantitative data is can be countable. Qualitative data is descriptive or recorded in the form of information or description and words. Qualitative data can be obtained through observations, photographs, documents, audio or video recordings and interview. Qualitative data can be analyzed by categorize, interpret and summarize the results. 
For example, you're going to investigate what other factors affect the stress among the academic staff. So the factors that cause the stress are qualitative data because it is descriptive and it recorded in the form of the description of words which you gathered through the interview. Okay, let's we look at the examples of the data. Jen Goodell conducted her research on behavior of the chimpanzee in Tanzanian jungle. She observed the behavior of the chimpanzee. For example, how the chimpanzees hunting, killing and eating the small colubus monkeys, what chimpanzees eat and how they use the tools to break or tweak. So these are the behaviors that Jen Goodell observed and recorded in the form of the information or photographs. So this data shows the qualitative data. However, she also collect the quantitative data. For example, the animal behavior with volumes such as the frequency and the duration of specific behaviors. So this data can be countable. So this shows the quantitative data. Okay, next example is observation on a cat. Okay, let's say when we look at the cat, okay, we also can collect the qualitative and also quantitative data. Okay, qualitative data means does not involve the numbers. Okay, it must be descriptive. Okay, so when you look at the cat, you sure will look at their fur color, color of its eyes. Okay, its fur is soft or rough and how it makes the sound how it smell, okay? So these are the characteristics you collect through the observation. So this shows that qualitative data. However, when you look at the cat, if you measure their weight, length, and number of the toes, how high it can jump, and how many ounces of food it eats, all this shows that quantitative data, which can be expressed in the form of numbers. Okay, let's we look at the another examples of the quantitative research. This experiment is actually regarding the does camouflage affect predation rates on two populations of mice. Okay, so the researchers spray painted mouse models with light or dark color patterns that matched those of the beach and inland mice and then they placed in beach and inland habitats. Then the next morning, they counted the damaged or missing models. So, when we look at the data that they gathered throughout this experiment, that is quantitative data because the researchers calculate the percentage of attacked mouse models. So, it shows that the results is measurable or countable. So, it is quantitative data. After you complete your experiment, you will collect the results or the data. So the experimental analysis could be done after the data collection. So when you analyze your data, there are some problems arise such as sampling error, human error, equipment error. Sampling error, we cannot examine every subject in a big population. Only study a sample or subset of them to represent the world population. So because of this, lead to sampling error. Next, the human error. Human error means the parallax error. This error is actually due to the viewing angle during the measurement. Next, the equipment's error. So this error is actually due to the error caused by the measuring instrument. Okay, however, we can overcome the sampling error by using the larger sample size so the minimum size must be 30 and then we should conduct the trials trials means replicate groups that are exposed to the same conditions in an experiment so when you repeat the same thing you can get the accurate results for example john is going to test each sugar variable three times 
Next, you also can overcome the sampling error by using the statistical analysis such as ANOVA test, t-test, and correlation test. That's all regarding this week's lesson. Thank you.